From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. Where there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say Thank you very much. Thank you. And hello, Doral. I love Doral. Hello, Miami. And hello, Florida. Thank you. There is nowhere else I'd rather be on this beautiful, cold, very cold summer evening than right here in the middle of the 10th hall. Beautiful hall, isn't it? Look at that lake. Isn't it beautiful? on one of the greatest golf courses on earth. And we really want to thank all of the tens of thousands of people that showed up. This is a lot of people. This is a lot of people. As the world can see, we are under the leadership. The Republican Party is bigger, stronger, more vibrant, and more united than ever, ever, ever before. Every day, we are welcoming more Americans to our ranks, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, young people, old people, union members, non-union members. Basically, everyone is joining our movement because it's a movement of common sense. It's common sense. Whatever happened to common sense in government, we've got it. We've got more than anybody's ever had. Meanwhile, the radical left Democrat Party is divided in chaos and having a full-scale breakdown, all because they can't decide which of their candidates is more unfit to be president, sleepy, crooked Joe Biden or laughing Kamala. Laughing Kamala. As you know, in our recent debate, and in honor of all of you, I dealt Joe Biden even according to the fake news media, the most decisive and overwhelming defeat in the history of presidential debates. I think so, right? I think so. And that was a big crowd that was watching. That was one of the highest rated shows ever on television. So I'm honored to be a part of it. I don't think he's too happy, but you know, I like being a part of it. But even CNN said as I walked off the stage that it was one of the greatest performances they've ever seen. But it was sort of easy, if you want to know the truth. Our victory was so absolute that Joe's own party now wants him to throw in the towel and surrender the presidency after a single 90-minute performance. They want Crooked Joe out of the race. It's a shame the way they're treating him. But don't feel sorry for him. He's a very bad guy. He weaponized government. Remember that. He's a very bad guy. Don't feel sorry for him. So tonight, I'm officially offering Joe the chance to redeem himself in front of the entire world. So Marco and Byron and everybody, here's what we're going to do. You guys can be referees if you like. Let's do another debate this week so that sleepy Joe Biden can prove to everyone all over the world that he has what it takes to be president. 
But this time it will be man to man, no moderators, no holes barred. Just name the place anytime, anywhere. And in the debate, Sleepy Joe also declared that he wanted to test his skills and stamina against mine on the golf course. Can you believe this? Did you ever see him swing? He's like this. That's why this evening, I am also, and this is in honor of you and everybody here, this is a 45,000 people. That's a lot of people. I'm also officially challenging Cricket Joe to an 18-hole golf match right here. On Doral's Blue Monster, considered one of the greatest tournament golf courses anywhere in the world, one of the great courses of the world. It will be among the most watched sporting events in history, maybe bigger than the Ryder Cup or even the Masters. And I will even give Joe Biden 10 strokes aside, 10 strokes, that's a lot. That means 20 strokes in case you don't play golf. I will give him 10 strokes aside, and if he wins, I will give the charity of his choice, any charity that he wants, one million dollars. And I'll bet you he doesn't take the offer. I would bet, he, because he's all talk. But what that match will do is prove that Joe is, in fact, all talk and no action. But on many things, not just golf, when pilots walk into the White House, he says he used to fly planes. He didn't. When truckers come in, he says he used to drive a truck. He didn't. When Jewish people are here, he always attended synagogues, he said. The Jewish people, he didn't attend the synagogue. Did he ever see a synagogue? He doesn't know what a synagogue is. When black people come, he spent his Sundays in black churches. All of it's false, all of it's fake. He's a fake. Unfortunately, he was like that in Afghanistan. He was like that with Russia, Ukraine, and he was like that on October 7th and the attack in Israel. He didn't know what he was doing. But whatever else can be said about crooked Joe Biden, you have to give him credit for one brilliant decision, probably the smartest decision he's ever made. He picked Kamala Harris as his vice president. No, it was brilliant because it was an insurance policy, maybe the best insurance policy I've ever seen, Marco. If Joe had picked someone even halfway competent, they would have bounced him from office years ago, but they can't because she's got to be their second choice. She has no choice and no chance. As Vice President, Kamala Harris was given two jobs, two very important jobs, actually. First, she was put in charge of the U.S. border security and the border. And she never showed up. She's never gone. She never went there once. And the border is the worst border in the history of the world, not just in the number of years, the worst. We had the best border in history. She has the worst border in the history of the world. And then she was sent to Europe to deter Russia from attacking Ukraine. How did that work out? Not too good. Both times, the result was a deadly failure. Since Kamala was made border czar, the Biden-Harris administration has lost track of an estimated 150,000 children, many of whom have undoubtedly been raped, trafficked, killed, or horribly abused. I think of it, 150,000 children are missing. Missing. They're gone. Nobody knows where they are. Many are not with us any longer. She's 100 percent for the Green New Scam, supports banning the sale of gas-powered cars. Who wants to drive an electric car for the rest of your life? Does anybody? You don't want to drive for 45 minutes and then stop for three hours. Is that what you say? And once the American energy industry totally shut down, starting with Pennsylvania fracking, and Texas drilling. No drilling in Texas, no fracking in Pennsylvania. We just got a poll from Pennsylvania with 12 points up. That's a lot. We got a poll from Texas with 16 points up. And we have some great people from Texas here tonight. 
And as a senator, Kamala sided with socialist Bernie Sanders. He's a real socialist. He's serious. But not as bad as Biden turned out to be. Bernie's embarrassed by some of the things that Biden did because they push him around. It's the ultra far left government takeover of the entire health care system. And I don't think Kamala Harris's California socialism is going to go down well with the people of Doral, the people of Miami, or the people of Florida. Because in Florida, we don't like socialism. We want our freedom, right? We want our freedom. And we have a lot of people, Marco, from Cuba, from Venezuela, from all over. And they don't want to hear about socialism or communism. Despite all the Democrat panic this week, the truth is it doesn't matter who they nominate because we are going to beat any one of them in thundering landslides. And this November is going to be amazing, going to be the most important election in the history of our country because our country's going down the tubes. That's a nice way of saying our country's not doing too well. We've never had anything like it. Our borders, our economy, the worst inflation ever. We have the politics on our side. We have the policies on our side that will make America great again, and they don't. They will only continue to destroy our nation. Our nation is being destroyed. Joe, Kamala, and the entire Democrat establishment have been caught red-handed in the thick of the biggest scandal and the biggest cover-up. It's a cover-up. That's what it is. And I said it when they hit this guy in the basement, and then they cheated on the election. It's a cover-up. It's the biggest cover-up in political history. As you know, they are all co-conspirators in the sinister plot to defraud the American public about the cognitive abilities of the man in the Oval Office. Sometimes he's there, not there often. Laughing Kamala, L-A-F-F-I-N apostrophe. Laughing. <laughs> Laughing Kamala was in on it. Crazy Nancy Pelosi, who, by the way, is also very cognitively impaired. Have you watched her lately? She's not doing too well. She's not doing too well. She's I think she's worse than Joe. You want to know that? She was in on it. Crying Chuck Schumer. You ever see him cry? He cries when he went the, the phoniest crying I've ever seen. Crying Chuck Schumer was in on it. Every Democrat cabinet member was in on it. They all knew this guy was grossly incompetent and every Democrat in the House and the Senate was in on it. It was a scam. The American people can never trust this group of liars ever again. They put our country at great risk and danger. That's why we are going to sweep them all out of office this November. I believe it'll be an election like no other. But the biggest problem for the radical left Democrats is that their candidates are very much, if you take a look, mentally deficient. Is that a nice statement? They are mentally deficient. I'm saying that because the other term is too tough. The biggest problem is that their policies are no good. Their policies are horrible. Americans want strong borders, not open borders. We want low taxes, not high taxes. You know, they want to increase your taxes four times by four times. We want a strong military, not a woke military. And we don't have a woke. We have some woke generals at top, but they'll be gone so fast, your head will spin. But we have a great military. We have a military that defeated ISIS in four weeks once I got in. We want no inflation, not 30 or 50 percent inflation, which is what you had. Think of it. You were destroyed. People were destroyed with the inflation. I don't even order bacon anymore. You know, bacon's gone up like five. I said, it's too expensive. I don't want it. I don't want it. No, it's gone up many times, right? Byron likes bacon. Bacon, I think maybe, how many stand up, Byron? Byron, how good is Byron? They say it's gone up four times since I, four times. So we don't eat bacon anymore, right? No more. We want American energy independence, not all electric cars and the Green News scam. It's the greatest scam. Above all, we want America first, not America last. They want America last. They, what they're doing to our country is not even believable. That's why Florida 
is going to defeat the radical left Democrat hoaxers and liars and the election day. We are going to tell crooked Joe Biden, Joe, you've done a horrible job. You're fired. Get out, Joe. You're fired. You know, it's only 103 degrees out here. So, you know, they built all these, they call them, sir, we have many water spots. I said, what about one for me? Do I have one? I don't have one, Marco. They gave water spots. Everybody has, they call it a water spot. Where water comes out, you get, they don't have anything for me. I'm being drenched up here. With your vote, I will begin saving our country from every Biden disaster starting the moment I lift my hand from the Bible after taking the oath of office. We're going to do it on day one. On day one, we're going to do it. I will seal the border, stop the invasion. We have an invasion coming through our southern border. And by the way, you know who wants that? You know who wants that invasion stopped the most? Hispanic people, because they don't want their jobs taken. They don't want their homes taken. And you know who it affects the most is black people, because these people are coming in and taking jobs at a level that nobody's ever seen before. What they've done to our country is unbelievable. But we want to send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home where they belong. Remember, remember, as I said, they come from prisons, they come from jails. All these countries are at record low numbers of crime. They're sending us their criminals from Caracas and Venezuela, Caracas, Venezuela. Next year, we'll meet in Venezuela because it will be safe. Their, pr their crime has gone down 72 percent because they've sent all of their drug dealers, their criminals, and most of their prisoners into our country. But that's true with most countries. And if I were running one of the countries throughout the world, not just in South America, I would be doing exactly the same thing. I would have done it faster than they've done it. But our country is being destroyed. Two weeks ago, it was revealed that Biden and Harris have allowed more than 50 radical Islamic terrorists, some of the worst in the world, by the way, to cross our border and remain at large in our country. And we have no idea where they are. They have no idea also where these terrorists are. But Joe and Kamala are simply carrying on with business as usual, holding fundraisers, taking afternoon naps. And as Joe says, I want to go to the beach today. The guy thinks he looks good in a bathing suit. Did you ever say? Well, somebody in his staff told him, you look great in a bathing suit. He can't lift the chair. You know, those chairs are meant for children and old people to lift. Old people and children. And he can't lift them. They weigh about four ounces. When I'm president, I promise you this, I will not rest until we have found these radical Islamic terrorists and throw them the hell out of our country. We're going to get them out of here. And we will not let them back in. So many people. So many people, very few were thrown out, but the ones that came back in during this Biden administration of open borders, who the hell wants open borders? How crazy is it? Under the Biden border disaster, other countries are emptying out their prisons and their jails. They're emptying out their mental institutions. And I go a step further. You know what an insane asylum is, right? Did anyone ever see the lovely movie Silence of the Lambs? Did you see it? Did you ever hear of Hannibal Lecter? He was a lovely man. He would love to have you for dinner. He will take you. You had many people for dinner. Well, we have a lot of people coming in. They always say, oh, that's terrible, the Trump would say. He is rambling about Hannibal Lecter. No, I'm not rambling. That's who will We are allowing people from insane asylums and mental institutions into our country by the tens of thousands. And they're closing them down in other countries. Because, you know the cost savings and all of the savings? and sending bloodthirsty terrorists, savage gang members, and child predators into the United States to prey on our people, to prey on you, to prey on everybody. They're coming not only from South America, but from all over the world, from Asia, Africa, and every other place. They're coming from all over the world. Two weeks ago, I spoke to the grieving mother, Jocelyn Nungari, a precious 12-year-old girl from Houston who is tied up stripped, assaulted, 
raped, strangled to death after walking the block to a 7-Eleven store on the corner. Her body was dumped near the side of the road in a shallow creek, charged with Jocelyn's heinous murder. Beautiful, beautiful girl. The mother is devastated. Like, I mean, pretty much, I would say, over. The mother, I don't know. I spoke to the mother. Mother is just as you would be, as anybody would be. But charged with Jocelyn's heinous murder are two illegal aliens who Joe Biden set loose into our country. He let them loose, and they knew who they were. They came across our border claiming they feared for their lives. No, other people feared for They feared for their lives when they saw these two guys. They didn't fear at all. They had no fear. Tough. They're tough people. And Joe Biden and his group of people let them in. We're going to bring back, by the way, we're bringing back Tom Holman. We're bringing back all of the guys that did such a great job on the border. We had the greatest border in history. Brandon Judd, great people. These are great people. One of them was in the country for only 20 days before ending Jocelyn's beautiful American life. And recently in Virginia, at Trump National Golf Club in the Potomac River, I had lunch with the mother of and the sister of Rachel Morin. Rachel was a 37-year-old beautiful mother of five who was attacked, raped, and brutally murdered while out on a run. She was running. She always wanted to keep herself in good shape, her mother told me. She was a beautiful person. Police believe the sadistic monster charged with Rachel's death first killed another woman in another country, then fled across Joe Biden's wide-open border into the United States, after which he attacked a nine-year-old girl and her mother in a home home invasion in Los Angeles before murdering Rachel in Maryland. When I return to the White House, we will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of our American suburbs and cities and towns. We're going to stop it. We will shut down deadly sanctuary cities. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. We will close up our border, and we want people to come in, but they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. And on day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. We have no choice. And as I say, and I say it all the time, and I already said it to you, no one has been hurt more by the Biden invasion than our great African-American and Hispanic-American populations. Under Crooked Joe, 109% of all net job creation over the last year has gone to migrants. Did you know that? Almost every job that was created has gone to migrants. In fact, more than every job. It's crushing wages for American workers, draining resources for American citizens, and stealing American jobs. And they are stealing them at levels that nobody's ever seen before. Joe Biden wants to be the president for illegal aliens, but I will be the president for law-abiding Americans of every background, every walk of life, and every race, religion, color, and creed. Joe Biden's job numbers are fake. They're fake numbers, and the fake media knows it, but they don't look at all of them back there. Oh, that's a lot, Marco. That's a lot, Marco. I think they probably think I'm going to be announcing that Marco is going to be vice president. I don't know. Because that's a lot of press. That's a lot of press. There are also overwhelmingly part time jobs, which really means that their second jobs of people who are struggling to get by, they're being taken by the illegal migrants that are coming into our country in these record numbers. We've never seen anything. It, it is indeed an invasion. When I return to the White House, I will once again be the greatest jobs president that God has ever created. And like we had five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, we will have full-time jobs at a level that nobody's ever seen before. We had the greatest economy in the history of the planet. Well-paying jobs and jobs that can support a home and a family very, very easily. We had it all. As everyone knows, the Biden economy is a nightmare for working families under Crooked Joe. Inflation price hikes, and they've cost, listen to this, $28,000. $28,000! And you know, under Trump, 
you made $14,000. That's a big swing. Under Biden and Harris, half of Americans are not taking a vacation at all this summer because they can't afford to do it. Most say it's because the cost of daily life is so high, no matter what they make, they can't. Because, you know, they like to say 20 percent, 29 percent, 26 percent, 31 percent. I think your inflation, your real inflation, is way over 50 percent, and I believe that. Meanwhile, Crooked Joe has spent almost 50 percent of his presidency on vacation. Almost all of it, including many, many weeks on the beach. And mansions are in. Think of this. Here's a guy that's been a politician all his life. He's got homes in the Virgin Islands, Nantucket, Lake Tahoe, Kiowa Island. I mean, where the hell did they get all this money, Byron? He's got more homes than I do. What the hell is going on with him? And that home he's got in Delaware is pretty nice, right? I remember they said it was, it was his son's home. You know, his son is running it, right? You know that, right? You know that. He's running our government. And Jill is helping. Jill is helping. Where's Hunter? Remember the sign, where's Hunter? Where's Hunter? He's in the White House. Hunter is in the White House running government right now, they say. That's interesting. No wonder Joe doesn't want to give up the job. His own staff says that the only hours he works are 10 a.m. to 4. Does anybody here have a job like that? Raise your hand, please. And I doubt he even spends that. And today he's with the people from NATO. And these people are sharp. I know them very well, every one of them. They're very smart. They're at the top of their game, and they're saying, what the hell is with this guy? We, don't, we can't figure it out. You know, I saved NATO because when I went down, hey, Barack Hussein Obama, has anyone ever heard of him? He would go. He would go and, you know, go to wherever the holding the NATO meeting, and he'd make a nice speech, and he'd leave. And Bush would go and make a nice speech, and he'd leave, in all fairness. Bush, Bush, oh, yeah. But he'd make a nice speech and he'd leave. They'd all go make speeches and they'd leave. They wouldn't even stay there a day. I went and didn't make a nice speech. I said, what the hell are you doing? Nobody's paying. Nobody was paying. But I didn't want to be obnoxious because I felt, you know, it's the first time I'd ever done this. I went. I didn't even know what the hell NATO was too much before, but it didn't take me long to figure it out, like about two minutes. <laughs> and the first thing I figured out was they weren't paying. We were paying. We were paying almost fully for NATO. And I said, that's unfair, but I didn't want to make a big mess. You know, I was president for about 15 minutes, and I didn't want to, you know, go after NATO is my first thing. But six months later, I went back to the second meeting, and I said, you know what? You're not paying your bills. You got to pay your bills. Somebody stood up from one of the countries, 28 countries, and only seven were paying what they should be paying. 28 countries. Think of that. And these countries, now we added a couple, but 28 countries. And they said, sir, could I ask you that? I said, you have to pay your bills. They said, sir, may I ask you a question? If we don't pay our bills, will you protect us from Russia? I said, you mean you're delinquent? They said, yes, we're delinquent. Let's say we're delinquent. Would you protect us? I said, no, I will not protect you from Russia. The money came in by the billions. It came in. There's never been, right? There has never been, where's Waltz? Where's Congressman Waltz? He, am I correct, Mr. Guy? This guy loves the military. He gets sick when he looks at what we're doing, but he loves it. Is that right? I got billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars came pouring in because he said, oh, this guy's a little different than the other guys. But Joe Biden is a part-time president while you are working overtime to get by. He's a part-time president. He doesn't work. Well, he can't work because he's mentally no good. He's shot. But he was shot 25 years ago. You know, he was never a smart person. In fact, Ted Kennedy was actually a friend of mine. Can you believe it? Because of Palm Beach. He lived in Palm Beach. The Kennedy compound, for those that think the Kennedys are struggling, they had the Kennedy compound. But I did him a favor, and he liked me, and I was very good to him, actually. And I said to him, Ted, let me ask you a question. Who's the smartest senator? Tell me. And he gave me a name, but I won't say it because I can't stand the guy, okay? I'll tell you 